Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, we're we'll going to be reacting to Woman Almost Died after learning what accountability is. Guys, when I saw the video on YouTube, I was like, nah, I really have to check it out. Well, guys, let's get straight into this. Okay. Okay, so one thing I want to start off with is why does your opinion trump over any other people's opinion? Right, so there, do you believe that there is a truth out there? Everything is subjective, but there is a right or wrong morally, especially when you're in a cultured society that is um, based off a set of standards and norms that we act on and we like act as. So, so everything is subjective. So is it objectively true you and I are having a conversation right now? Yes. So that's not subjective then. So not everything yes. is subjective. So why do you believe morals? Okay. Right, so something is objective. Yes, but why do you believe your subjective opinion trumps there. over other people's right. opinion? Well, let me ask you another right question. I'll tell you, I will no, answer. Please don't interrupt me. Uh, well, you can, no, let me finish my sentence. I do not want to hear it. You think that your opinion is over other people's opinions. You think you were right subjectively. Okay. What is right or wrong? Okay, is murder wrong? Yes, of course. Well, then abortion Not should be illegal. Answer what, to what, question. What constitutes a human? What is a human? Deoxyribonucleic acid and, the, and conception. But to me, a human forming. would be someone with a consciousness who is alive in yeah, this world. Well, to guess you, what? You're wrong. So that's no, fine. No, you're wrong because I think that's right and you think that's Prove right. Prove me. Prove it wrong. What constitutes a human be being? What is the so definition of a human DNA being? And the creation of DNA that will never exist again, mm -hmm. and a soul goes into that moment. I don't expect you guys. What's a soul? A soul. What's a soul? The. No, maybe not. What is a soul? What is a soul? The eternal, indistinguishable, let's just say, non-visible being of your of your existence. But I don't like, believe that. I don't well, believe anything is eternal. And that doesn't mean that but does not make yours a Yeah, you do. Well, hold on a second. At like some, here's the thing. At some point, somebody's truth has to win. Because guess what? Your being truth is, death. your truth doesn't matter. That's still what? a truth You've claim. had your truth in this country for the past thousands of decades. Your Thousands of decades? Not thousands. Goodness. Whatever. <laughs> I, I, that's a little embarrassing. But <laughs> like, your your truth has been the narrative of this country forever. Has and it? you think, Roe yes, versus Wade just got repealed. Abortion was legal in this country for 40 years. And before the 40 years, what was and it? And crime dropped Thankfully, 40% after and it went. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, think? hold on. Do you think abortion lowers crime rates? Crime, crime dropped 40% after abortion became legal. Why, why is that the case? Uh, it's called a statistic. Who, who has the most abortions in America? Um, women. Black people. Is that black so? Women. Are you trying to say the termination of blacks in the womb lower crime? <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a very racist argument. That is not okay. Racist. You know you blacks. Know you know blacks have forty five percent of the blacks. 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 I was just using African American. Blacks. What? Okay. You guys can come up and talk if you want. Yeah, it's like it's 95 degrees out here, man. Yes. So, yes, sir. That's a racist. Okay. No, you're the racist. You're the says that abortion lowers crime rates and blacks have the most abortions in the country. Yes. Not name calling. Wait, is it not Black Lives Matter or is it African American Lives Matter? <laughs> oh, really? Okay, I thought it was BLM, so I say blacks. Okay. He was just okay. Not too much, Andrew. Do you believe that you have some sort of privilege that skews your view on other people's lives? Because personally, I don't believe you could step in my shoes as a black woman and relate and understand the things. So I feel like it's not fair for you to choose what I get to do with my life because I'm a black woman in a white society. What does being black have to do with truth? Because there are different things that we experience, like and my truth might not be like truth. What? Did you get into college easier? than I do? What? <laughs> yes, you get jobs and internships that white kids don't get. Oh, poor, we're poor a, white people. You have, wow. you have entire movements dedicated what? to your race. We're so like, okay. Right. Right. Those Nazis? movements are to get oh, rights. Right. You're crazy. Okay, so, do, you, do you not believe in racism? Do, of course racism exists. The Democrat Party is still alive and well. Do you think people are racist against white people? Of all the time. All the time. That's his a definition. Affirmative of action is racism against white people. Yes. Okay. And Asians as well. And Asians, that's right. So I, I do have a question in that sense. If affirmative action is racism, why are most colleges predominantly white? Why are they most predominantly white? Why are most colleges, public colleges, are predominantly yeah, white? We are a, we're a majority white country, hey, you realize yes. that, right? Yeah. So, so colleges are the depiction of the nation. Okay. 
and actually blacks on campus are disproportionate more than their population in certain areas, in certain campuses, than their population because of affirmative action. In HBCUs? Certain campuses. So, but let me just ask a more broad philosophical question. Why does skin color matter at all? Why should we care about because it? Because of the society we live in. Because well, hold on. The but no. You're dismissing anything that has ever happened to someone of color Let me ask you a question. What can, what can you do or what can I do that you can't do? Explain what how law? Affirmative action, works. Explain how affirmative action, affirmative action, works. action is lowering of tests, standards, and quota Wrong. for a quota. It is. No, it's I'm not. It's, it's the way it works. It's the way it works. I'm not going to entertain fallacies. No, you entertain me because I. Just let him talk. We have to hear your fallacies. Why does skin color matter? Well, I believe I believe skin be color matters because of the society. He's not being respectful. Do you know how And I guess it goes into critical right? race theory. Right? Yes, it is. Because it's of the society we have lived in, too. race is a factor. Too. If it's from the beginning of time race wasn't a factor <laughs> and there was never anybody who was oppressed because of their race, I feel like it would not play a part in anything that we do. But because literally <laughs> less <laughs> They were interrupting you. I was do you believe in black on black crime? Do I believe in black on black crime? Yeah, yeah it's abundant. Yeah. yeah, it's the number one cause of death in many black communities. I mean, I'm just being honest. Like, Okay. So do you, so back to our previous argument that was interrupted. Um, so in the sense of what, like, like I was saying, you don't believe like because of the history and because somebody races have been oppressed, you don't believe like race plays a part in things and you don't believe like. No, 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 that's not true. No, no. So, you know, I, do you know who Thomas Sowell is? You know who Thomas Sowell is? No. I really encourage you to look. Thomas Sowell's great. He's one of the best black economists of the 20th century. Grew up in Harlem, and he's done the best research in the 1940s, 1950s, and 60s black community. And essentially, his argument is that black America was experiencing a renaissance in the 50s and 60s, despite discrimination. Yes. Now, the one part that I would agree with. But, however, it's not the black community as a whole. It's Harlem black community. There are, Chicago too, but let's pretend you're right. Okay. The one argument that I would agree with, and I'm, I'm against systemic racism arguments, the one that I would say, you know what, there was something very wrong is when Democrat Lyndon Baines Johnson came in and destroyed the black nuclear family. If there was one part where I could say, you know what, that was unjust and that has to be undone, it's when Lyndon Baines Johnson went in to the Great Society program with the intent to destroy the black nuclear family. Okay. So in that sense, do you believe the war on drugs also played a part? Or not do you not really. believe in no. the war on drugs? Well, look, I mean, I believe we should be very harsh on drugs. But I think there is, I would give some merit to the argument of some government agencies peddling cocaine in the inner cities. There is, there is evidence to show that. I'm not going to debate it. Do I think it has the, so for example, like there's one number that I'm fascinated with, right? Single motherhood in the black community was about 28% in 1945. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right now, now it's around 65 to 70%. Yeah. Why? Hmm. Are we more racist than we were in 1945? No. Okay. No. So then what happened? Militarism. The war on drugs. Okay, the fair war enough. On drugs. Um, the demolish, demolishing the nuclear family, in a sense. Right. And I agree. believe due to the history that's happened, it, racism is still very prevalent in a lot of the systemic, I mean, a lot of the systems that yeah. are in America, correct? Yeah. So, no, no, of course not. But I'm actually, I was actually caught by your shirt. You know Malcolm X is super pro-life. Yes. I, I think Malcolm X could teach a lot of the black movement something, because it, 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 more so than Martin Luther King, because Malcolm X, I'm, I'm getting there. Ma Malcolm X, I, I, they, some people miss, don't describe him correctly as being violent, right? That was a very small part of his literature. He was very big on trying to get black Ameri America to succeed, to, to succeed despite, the black, to, despite the white liberal. Yes. And I, not the white liberal. He did say white liberal. Oh, you go look up the Malcolm X white liberal quote. And so I think that's interesting. Just think about it. Go look up. The, Malcolm X warned against white liberals owning black America for their own gain, so, which is exactly what BLM is. Okay, so back to, my, back to my initial yeah. point. Back to my initial point. You don't believe that my truth can be different than yours, specifically no, no, based on race. No, no, experiences can be different, but there is always a truth. I'll give you an yeah, example. Yeah. We all might have five different opinions of a car crash, right? But eventually a truth will be revealed of what really happened. Does that make sense? So you believe that your truth is, your the truth that you have found yourself is the ultimate truth. I would hope so, yeah. And I'm willing to learn. And then make America great again. Otherwise, I mean, and I'm actually, I think Malcolm X can teach us a lot right now. 
Yes. What do you think about like the 1960s and 70s uh, militarization of the police, the shift in the police? Um. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm generally very pro police. What about the mil what about the military? I mean, what? the question is, what came first? And I honestly don't know the answer. Was it the rise in crime, or was it the increase? Was it the the well, police that went into the? If you knew what you were talking about, you would know the answer. Yeah, it's not so clear, yeah, um, because there was a massive crime wave in the early 1970s in New York, where a lot of New Yorkers demanded more police with heavy, heavy heavier weaponry and the ability to, to enforce the law. And post militarization of the police, crime went up. And then it went down in the 80s. Violent crime went big time. Down well, let's big time. talk about the 10 years that right after. What happened there? What do you think happened? So, so you're drawing a correlation between police officers uh, being militarized and more people committing crimes. Over militarization of the police, yes. Is Why? Uh, not exactly more people committing crimes, more people being arrested for crimes. Okay. And put into jail for okay. minor crimes. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 can't, I can't disagree with that. Uh, the prison system, I mean, it, we account for... Account yeah, I mean, for I, I, why do people go to prison, right? Because they commit crimes, so... Guys, I feel this conversation wasn't really held in, to be honest. Mm, to be honest. Because a lot of them were just trying to see a fault and try to escape. No, actually, assimilating the knowledge he was passing. And they're like, why is the truth always the truth? I, I feel like child is someone, is someone that... Like expressing himself based on what he knows. And let me use Jordan Peterson for instance. Like Jordan Peterson says the truth he believes in and he hopes that's the truth. You get the kind of thing. When you know what you're saying, like you've studied it and you are saying it, you have the kind of confidence that back you up. You might be wrong, but like deep down you know what you're saying is the truth. Not like you know you don't know the truth and you're trying to cook up stories, but you know the truth and you're trying to pass it on. Maybe what you know might be wrong, but like, this is what I know. I am open for you to be corrected as far as the truth is being passed on. So I believe that these guys were just trying to find a fault in Charlie's cake, not really assimilating the knowledge he was there to give. And more like the conversation was not really held, to be honest, it was not because if you want to understand some things, like ask valuable questions, not you trying to find out why is this your truth is the truth and why isn't. Because I believe that everyone has a chance to meet some great people in this life. And I believe Charlie K is going to go down as a great man who has impacted lives. And if you want to learn from people, like, don't just come here asking them reasons. Like, if you feel like what he's saying is not right, like, just tell him I don't think what you're saying is right and move on. Because you just trying to prove him wrong does not do you good. Well, guys, tell me what you think about this. Please like, share, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.